Hello guys and welcome back. This is part 3 of a series of videos I'm doing about the echocardiographic assessment of aortic stenosis. Make sure to watch the first two videos before starting this one. Thank you for all your support and don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start with part 3 of the echocardiographic assessment of aortic stenosis. Let's talk about some of the additional echocardiographic imaging modalities in the assessment of aortic stenosis. First, we have transesophageal echocardiography. Transesophageal echocardiography is rarely required for the assessment of aortic stenosis, but has use in the assessment of patients for TAVI. If transthoracic echocardiography is insufficient, Doppler interrogation using transesophageal echocardiography may confirm the severity of aortic stenosis. Next, we have exercise stress echocardiography. The British Society of Echocardiography does not recommend the routine use of exercise stress echocardiography for the assessment of aortic stenosis. Exercise testing without echocardiography is advocated in international guidance to unmask symptoms and identify patients with severe aortic stenosis who may benefit from early intervention. However, the use of exercise stress echocardiography in asymptomatic severe aortic stenosis is no longer recommended in international guidance. Now let's talk about some of the special circumstances we faced in aortic stenosis assessment. First, we have low gradient aortic stenosis. Most of the time, the clinical approach will allow the sonographer to classify the severity of aortic stenosis. However, in a significant minority of cases, the indices of aortic stenosis do not agree, which can present a challenge to the sonographer. These are several different reasons for this apparent disagreement. The first is measurement error, and a priority when faced with such a scenario is to recheck all measurements and indices to ensure that accurate information has been obtained. The second explanation is that there is not a linear relationship between aortic valve Vmax, mean gradient, and aortic valve area. And the final explanation relates to alterations in flow. Patients with reduced transvalvular flow will generate lower than expected Doppler indices for the observed severity of valve stenosis. The usual clinical example of this phenomenon is in the context of impaired left ventricular ejection fraction where poor systolic function means that gradients will be relatively low despite small aortic valve areas. We already know that in patients with reduced left ventricular ejection fraction, we will have a low transvalvular flow than expected. The challenge is when we encounter a low gradient aortic stenosis with preserved ejection fraction. So here we have a summary of recommendations for low gradient aortic stenosis with a left ventricular ejection fraction equal or more than 50%. So if, for example, you found a calcified aortic valve with restricted motion and you are getting an aortic valve area less than 1, an aortic valve area index less than 0 0.6, a mean pressure gradient less than 40, 
and an aortic valve Vmax less than 4, the first thing you have to do is confirm the severity. Now, to confirm the severity, first make sure you have an optimal alignment of continuous wave Doppler. Also, ensure the use of blind probe. Next, ensure you have optimal imaging for your measurements. For example, when you measure the left ventricular outflow tract size. Make sure you have optimal positioning of pulse wave sample volume and consider transesophageal echocardiography. After following all these steps, the severity should be reclassified. If after revaluation, consistent indices of severity are obtained, then treat the patient accordingly. However, if you have followed all these steps to confirm the severity and you are still getting mixed parameters, so the next step will be to calculate the stroke volume. If the stroke volume index by body surface area is more than 35, the aortic stenosis is more likely to be moderate and the patient should have close echocardiographic and clinical follow-up. But if the stroke volume index by body surface area is less than 35, you need to check this guiding for likely severity. First, if the mean gradient is more than 30-35, the aortic stenosis is more likely to be severe, but if the mean gradient is less than 25, then the aortic stenosis is more likely to be moderate. Second, if the aortic valve area is less than 0.8, the aortic stenosis is more likely to be severe. Third, if there is an increase of the index left ventricular mass, the aortic stenosis is more likely to be severe. And fourth, don't forget to check the patient's clinical presentation. Now let's talk about the flow rate assessment. There is an increasing interest in the use of flow rate in aortic valve disease. Assessment of flow rate has theoretical benefits over the assessment of static volumes like, for example, the stroke volume index. But a lack of prospective studies means that, at the moment at least, it is not clear how patients should be managed if aortic stenosis severity is defined according to the flow rate. It is not entirely clear what threshold of flow rate should be considered as normal, and given that flow rate is a non-index parameter, smaller individuals will necessarily have lower flow rate than larger individuals. Therefore, the BSE currently does not recommend routine use of flow rate, although acknowledge that it is an area of increasing interest. Sometimes we don't know when to escalate the patient's findings. So I'm going to give you six situations where you should highlight to the referring clinician. Number one, if you found very high gradients or a very severe aortic stenosis. For example, an aortic valve Vmax more than 5 or a mean gradient more than 60. Number two, if you observed a rate of change of aortic valve Vmax. For example, a heavily calcified aorta with an increase of more than 0.3 meters per second per year. Number three, if you have a left ventricular ejection fraction less than 55%. Number four, a global longitudinal strain more than minus 14. Number five, an increase index left ventricular mass and number six, 
High likelihood findings of pulmonary hypertension. To finish, let's talk about aortic stenosis and dobutamine stress echocardiography. Although patients with depressed left ventricular ejection fraction, low flow, low gradient aortic stenosis represent only 5 to 10% of the aortic stenosis population, they constitute a highly challenging subset with regard to the assessment of aortic stenosis severity and therapeutic decision making. Dobutamine stress echocardiography has been shown to be useful in overcoming the discordant gradient observed in these patients because it can identify the presence of true severe aortic stenosis. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So see you on another day. Bye.